Hey, what's up, guys? We're back yet again with the top five best decks in the game. At the end of the season, professional players were fighting for the highest ranks on the leaderboard, and these were the decks that rose to the top. The decks shown today have capabilities of crushing opponents with massive outplays or pure power of overpowered card combinations. It's time to learn from the five best players in the world and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone supporting the channel with credit code SIRTAG. Both the ranked 6 and 7 player in the world use this giant graveyard deck to spam their way to the top of the leaderboard. Alright, we got the lowest skill deck in existence. This is the deck that you want to play if you don't want to use your brain and lose all of your friends. So we're going to go for Little Prince at the start, and we'll easily activate King Tower with this giant. I'm surprised that he would go in for a Firecracker at the river like that. Maybe he thinks he's running the low skill strategy. Oh, dude, he's got e barbs. Okay, all right. Say less, man. When our Little Prince is about to cross the river, we always click the ability and potentially knock back stuff. Nice. That battle healer was bound to lock onto our Little Prince, but we are pretty devilish, and we knock back the angel and shut her down. He descends down to the depths of despair, and he has a pretty hellish time having to spend more elixir after. So, when you're up elixir with his deck, you can set up a Dark Prince or a Giant in the back, and then you can Graveyard with it. Usually, you want to spam Archers as often as you can, splitting them in the back so you can get to the evolution. That's true with all of the decks that we're going to be playing today. But, generally with this deck, you want to be able to defend first, and then when you're up elixir, then you go for the Graveyard. Because a lot of times your opponent won't have Elixir to defend everything, because Giant Graveyard does way more damage when you have an Elixir advantage as do most things. Also, this Electro Dragon would typically put us in a position to activate King Tower, but I remember that we already activated King Tower against the Firecracker, so it doesn't matter. So, what do we do? We keep up the Elixir advantage and go Giant in the back, or we can go for Archers. I like splitting Archers here just to get the evolution. It's just more fun that way as well, because then you get to see where your opponent responds, and then you go opposite side. So, interestingly enough, we see an Elixir Golem with Battle Healer. So, our strategy here, since the Electro Dragon is out of cycle, is to go Minions with our Giant. Because he doesn't have Electro Dragon, these minions are bound to get a lot of value unless he has arrows. Most people won't have. Oh, come on! Really? You're one of them? You are actually one of the few Elixir Golem players in the entire game that runs that. 90% of them will not have that, by the way. They will all have, like, Rage and, like, Tornado. But this guy is built different, literally. Alright, so we're to Snowball so we can kill the annoying Firecracker. And you know what? We're fine. We're giant graveyard. We do more damage than you. So our strategy here is to go in for the graveyard and then go for the giant afterward. And the reason why we do it in that order is because the graveyard skeletons will all get tanked for by the giant if you drop it like that. And obviously, we want to maximize our time that we have and make sure that all the graveyard skeletons are going to be tanked for by the giant without wasting any time with the giant on the map getting shot by the tower for no reason. The graveyard skeletons take a little bit of time to spawn in, so that's why you're able to go for the giant a little bit later. We're gonna go for minions here, and watch how much elixir I'm about to get. My man is giving us an elixir printing factory right now. <laughs> We're like the US economy. <laughs> It's unreal. We're printing elixir like crazy. And I think we're just going to graveyard and end this man. Wait, he didn't even take a tower. No, we're able to snowball back the Leap Barbarians too? This is awesome. Light work. As we are lighting this tower ablaze, we would have three crowned him if we were just a little bit longer in the game. But time ran out to torture our opponent with our low skill strategy. And in the battle against the low skill Elixir Golem, our deck ranked higher. There's a reason that Giant Graveyard is the fifth best deck in the game and the easiest one to play. The rank five player in the world outplayed all of his opponents with this Hog Rider Earthquake deck. Yo, this guy finished 851 in the world. So we're gonna get after it with our Hog Rider and start hammering this tower. First play is go for the Hog Rider, and even though we've got the evolution, we don't really want to give him a free King Tower activation. Instead, oh man, he's going to get it for free anyway. Well, no, he took a Hog Rider hit. Wait, the Firecracker's going to lock onto the Baby Dragon now. This is hilarious. Yo, the Firecracker's still alive and still targeting the Baby Dragon. Yo. Wait, the Firecracker might not die. We're going to Ice Spirit. Oh, it all died at once. That feels bad. It was still good for a second. It was promising. It had a lot of potential. It did like 1,400 damage, so I don't know what I'm complaining about when I'm winning the game to that extent against a top 800 player. What the heck, man? So we're going to go for Goblins, and we know that we're playing against a Lumberjack Balloon Freeze deck, which is not a good matchup for this deck. Whenever you're playing against a Lumberjack Balloon Freeze and you really only have Bomb Tower and Firecracker as anti-air defense and your Bomb Tower doesn't shoot up, it doesn't look good, you know? So we're going to Bomb Tower here, and we're going to get ready with our Mighty Miner so the Inferno Dragon doesn't lock. Oh, it is not good for us at all. This is pretty spicy. 
So I have to go Ice Spirit on the Inferno Dragon, and maybe we're going to be able to kill the Inferno Dragon without losing the game. He did use his Freeze, so I think the Inferno Dragon does fall. And that was the best defense that we could have done, I believe. Maybe we could have went for Goblins on the Inferno Dragon instead of the Ice Spirit, and that would have been slightly better. Anyway, he is not going to have an amazing answer to this, right? Oh, no, he does. That's great. That's exactly what we want to see. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to eat the Lumberjack damage because we've taken so much damage in the right. I feel like I can eat damage on both sides and be okay. Since it's around the same, now I can retain my Elixir advantage. So maybe I'm able to do something with the Mighty Miner. This would be the worst matchup that you could get with this deck, by the way. Like, legitimately, out of all of them, I think this is the worst. I'm going to go Goblins here. And we do have Evil Firecracker, so maybe we can pop off with that. I'm going to try to splash onto the Knight and then also hit the Tower. I don't know if this is going to work, but hopefully... Oh, yes! Okay, hit the Bowler and then hit the Tower too. Please? Okay, that's good too. Nice. A lot of damage. So, we're going to have to use a Defensive Hog Rider. There's no doubt in my mind. We're going to go for a Ice Spirit and then we're going to go Hog Rider on the Bowler. And the bowler's going to ball, and then we can go for goblins. And we might be able to counter the bowler. Who knows? So I want to stop this lumberjack from crossing because he's obviously going to use the lumberjack rage with the balloon. We want to go in for our firecracker here and then get back to an ice spirit. And I think we're fine. I think that we need an ice spirit on the balloon, though, because he might go in for a freeze and be aggressive and spontaneous and frisky on me. I'm going to hog red in the right because it's too obvious for him to go in for the bowler there. And then we can go for a Mighty Miner as well. And then we can go in for probably another set of Goblins after. So we're just trying to outcycle him. We're trying to outplay him, you know? Wait. We're going to go for this ability. And then we're going to go opposite side. And we're going to go Goblins. And I hope that the Bowler doesn't hit. Yo, that was perfect. Yo, we're forcing the Freeze too. Firecracker's going to the right-hand side. Let's get it. All right, we can go for another Firecracker. But I have to defend this. I don't know if it's possible. I don't think it is. I think he just wins. We can Ice Spirit. It's not going to get one shot by the... Oh, man. How am I going to stop this? I got to go in for a Mighty Miner on the Baby Dragon. The Firecracker Evolution is popping off. The Balloon dies. All right. We're just going to keep up the pressure on the right-hand side. We're going to get ready with the Mighty Miner ability. I can't do it. I just have to kill the Knight. He's going to possibly do something that we were allowed to get the Firecracker on the left-hand side, too. That's nice. He's going to probably go Baby Dragon or Bowler or something. We need to cycle more Firecrackers. We're going to Firecracker on the left-hand side, and we're going to get ready for a Hog Rider and go for dual lane pressure. We might have beat a top 800 player in the world with a hard counter. Please let me beat him. Okay? He's just never missing. He's never missing the Tornado. He's so good. What the heck? Wait, can we cycle like an Earthquake and a Log and win? Yo! Let's go! <laughs> that was intense. I had to play my best Clash Royale to win that match. I don't think I made many mistakes. It shows the unbelievable outplay potential that you have with this Hog Rider deck. If you play perfect, you can beat anything, which is quite a contrast to our low skill strategy before. You gotta love seeing the Hog Rider hammer hit soar. The rank four player of the world buried his opponents in skeletons with this graveyard deck. Oh, we're playing against Mr. Blade. Throwback to Beyblades. I don't know why I think of that, but every time I see the name Blade, that's what I think of. Nostalgia at its finest. I should have activated King Tower with the tornado against the miner, but it is what it is. Maybe with this deck, we're going to find more opportunities with a huge elixir advantage. Oh, he's going to have minor poison. Okay. <laughs> Clash Royale. We were playing against top ladder players. Now we're playing against someone with a huge hard counter to me again. Dang. The minor poison is one of the most difficult matchups to play against with this deck. Because if you think about it, your graveyard is going to get countered by the poison every time. Usually, you would want to wait until double elixir before going in for graveyards. But in this particular matchup, we want to take advantage of the moment where our opponent doesn't have the poison in cycle. So we're going to go in for a graveyard because he poisoned on our tower earlier against Little Prince. And now we can maybe get some damage, but it's looking really bad. Oh my gosh. How are we going to win this? I got a poison on top of the Musketeer. I think the way that we win against Minor Poison is forcing them to poison on defense. And we gradually poison them out. And we defend against their Miners, catching it with the Knight and the Barbaro possibly. While we gradually get more damage with the poison because he's not able to poison our tower. He has to poison on defense against the graveyard. That's the strategy. We'll see how it works. We're also going to go in for our little evolution whenever we get the chance, but it's not going to come down anytime soon. All right. So Little Prince is going to be able to kill the Miner, and it killed the Musketeer, and it also ended up killing the Mortar. That gave us a lot of value. Even if you think that the Graveyard isn't going to be a good decision, and they'll counter it with the Poison, it's smart because the way that I see it is we get the Poison out of him, and then he can't cycle it on offense. So that's how we're going to play it. See, now we go in for the Knight. We could reset the Mighty Miner if we wanted to, but I'm not going to. If he cycles anything at the back or if he cycles a Mortar, we're just going to counter it with the Tombstone. 
and then we'll poison on top of the mortar and we'll poison and try to get damage. Anything he drops near at the tower is poison value for us. We take that all day long. So we will try to go for our baby dragon in the back because it's less likely to get poisoned. And that musketeer is in poison targeting range, so we're going to take it. I think the skeletons hold it in place too, so that's huge. It's really good to notice that. Because usually the musketeer would run away, but the skeletons are like, you're going to get dragged down into our graveyard. Literally. <laughs> it's nice. All right, we're going to go for a little prince on top of the mighty miner. And then we can maybe go in for a graveyard again with a barbaro. But typically what happens here is if you try to go through with units that are crossing the river, you will never be able to break through because they will stop you from locking and loading and getting through the river. But if you barbrill, it always gets through. They can't body block a barbrill from crossing unless they have a monk. That's nice. Okay, so we can go for a knight here and then go for another graveyard. And it seems like to me he's in a bad spot. He miners in the back and tries to get damage because, you know, if he drops in the safe spot, it's always predictable. Then we're just going to tornado. So we're fine. <laughs> we're hard chilling. And now we're poisoning again. So we're putting him in an even harder spot to come back from. He has to start poisoning on offense to get back in this game, I believe. Also, I wonder if we can go in for the little prince here and force out the poison. But then he definitely does it. And then when he does, then he's going to be down a lot. And then we can go for our graveyard. That's what I was hoping for. The skeletons. Yep, we get the poison. Nice. Let's Graveyard and Barbrill immediately so we can punish him. And then we can go for the Baby Dragon as well. Barbrill is able to clean up the rest of the Mortar as well, which is nice. And then with King Tower activated, that Mighty Miner is accomplishing nothing. Now we can go for the Evolved Knight at the River, and then we can Graveyard afterward. So, I think at this moment, this is where we pop off with Ludicrous Value. Especially if he decides to go and drop stuff on top of the Baby Dragon, because it's not going to kill. And the Evolved Knight is still there. Yo! Baby Dragon locks, and that's what we needed. We're going to load up the damage and collect the free win. So, it was a difficult game, actually, but I think we played a little bit better than our opponent. And I'm just glad that we were able to beat Minor Poison with a graveyard deck. Not something that should happen most of the time, but we were able to pop off. And all I need to do is seal his fate with one more poison. So, we're going to go and hit the King Tower to assert dominance. And go for the Tornado. Always go in for your poison first because it does more damage over time. The Tornado is going to take a little bit less time compared to the 8 second poison. If you're good enough, Graveyard still slaps Minor Poison. The ranked 2 and 3 player in the world used this Electro Giant deck to lightning past opponents and reach the top of the game. So this Electro Giant deck seemingly finished number 1 in the world, but that was because of a glitch. It actually finished number 2. This guy's going to go in for a Lumberjack Balloon first play. Balls to the walls aggression, you love to see it. Free Tornado to activate King Tower for us, and that's one of the reasons why having a building with Tornado is so strong. You saw it with a Graveyard deck, and now you see it with Electro Giant. It is ridiculous to be able to go and activate King Tower against win conditions for only 6 Elixir and fully counter your opponent. So we're going to Electro Giant in the back since we're up a lot, and maybe Destroyer is about to get destroyed. He's going to Recruits in the back first play on defense, and you know what? We have two possibilities. We could go for Little Prince in the middle, and then it's going to stay stationary and target both sides because it's got really long range. We would have to go for a Knight to go and counter this. And whoa, dude, we didn't even predict the Fisherman. <laughs> I didn't mean to do... Oh my gosh! Wait, chill! Calm down with that! Alright. Well, I'm glad my reaction speed was good. Because otherwise, that level 16 fisherman was the pay-to-lose experience for us. <laughs> that, that was scary. I haven't seen a level 16 card in the game before. I mean, that's a lie. Remember when Mirror leveled up cards plus 2 level advantage? I, I've made so many videos on that. Level 16 E-barbs are broken. Well, this time it'll be level 16 Fisherman being broken. Also, I have no good defense to this besides Little Prince. We do have the King Tower activated at least, so maybe we don't lose the game? I'm going to Little Prince away, so then he can't freeze. Because if he froze, he would have had to freeze the King Tower, the Princess Tower, and then also everything else. Wait, 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 wait. He's going to mess up. He's going to mess up. He wasn't ready! I love doing that. It's so much fun. Because then you splash onto the Tower too with the bullet. As you guys can see, we are tornadoing all his expectations out the window. He's trying to activate King Tower with the Electro Giant and also there, and neither of them worked out. Wait, if he cycles anything, we can just go for an Electro Giant at the river because now he's not able to mirror up the Fisherman. You lose your tower, good sir. How does that make you feel? Probably not so good. So he's going to Hunter, and I hope he loses the tower here because I, I said it so confidently that he lost the tower. Please don't let me get trolled. We're going to Evo Knight, and then we're going to try to defend everything minimalistically with the Little Prince. We can pop through with the Little Prince ability if we need to, but 
I don't even want to. Wait, is the hunter gonna take out my tower? It's a level 16 hunter. Oh my gosh. That thing is a monster. What the heck? Bro, calm down. Who let you do that? All right, we have lightning and we have tornado. So we have two different ways of stopping the fisherman. We're gonna have to tornado here. And then we're gonna have to lightning afterward. And I don't think that we're breaking through. Dude, why do you have two fishermen? You troll. You monster. All right, we're a little prince here. So let this go. And we're gonna try to go for a tornado and also a cannon. I think that that's gonna be our best bet. We should be fine on defense, even if he decides to go in for a freeze. I don't think he's gonna do more than like one hit. So we're fine. Barbaro does get damage on the tower too. He's not responding to that. Okay, we could lightning twice, but where's the fun in that? Kind of just want to lightning with Electric Giant and win once. Just do that. He's going to try to activate. No, he can't. He has to pull backwards. All right, with just lightning. Electric Giant's going to get pulled the other side because he's actually good at the game. Feels bad, man. All right, this is really coming down to the wire. This is not fun. This is not good. All right, let's Barbaro on offense to force out more Elixir. We know that everything's going to die. Oh, wait, we pulled back the Lumberjack. Yo, that's huge. Oh, the Lumberjack is monumental for our success. And then we lightning them out. I mean, the lightning has to be faster than the balloon hit, right? There's no way. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Surprised to see a balloon Lumberjack deck with Fireball. But the Electro Giant stays strong and earns the claim to fame by winning the game while extinguishing our opponent's flame. Clash Royale World Finalist Pedro used this minor poison deck to dig holes for every opponent, outmaneuvering all the pros he played against to reach number one in the world. It's time to test the best deck in Clash Royale, and we're currently playing against someone that finished top 200 in the world as well. The reason why this deck solidified its spot at number one in the rankings is because of its defenses. Every single time that you go in for a little prince, an evolved knight, or maybe going in for delivery plus goblins, those type of trades will give you cost-effective defenses all day long, allowing you to throw more minor poisons at your opponent's towers, so then you can get ahead in damage. You will get guaranteed damage every time that you go in for minor plus poison, and that will make your opponent pretty frustrated if they're trying to break through with a hog rider or maybe a giant or an electro giant and they're getting distracted by your buildings like bomb tower the direct damage that you're getting will eventually net you the win because you'll get more damage overall than the opponent also i knew he's going to go in for a graveyard since we saw the knight at the river so i stopped his knight from crossing the river so then our princess tower started to go and target on top of the graveyard skeletons and because our princess tower is targeting the graveyard skeletons we didn't take that much damage if it was targeting on the knight, then the graveyard skeletons wouldn't get cleaned up by our tower, and then they have free reign to inflict pain on us. So, our strategy in this matchup, as you guys saw earlier, our opponent, um, when they were running minor poison and we were running graveyard, he's going to want to poison on top of our little prince and hit our tower as often as possible, because he doesn't need to save his poison. Now, I might need to save my poison for defenses against the graveyard, but if I can get away with it in single elixir, I'll try to defend against the graveyard with just goblins. And that's going to be our strategy. So we're going to go in for our Royal Delivery here. And then we're going to go in for Goblins afterward if we need to, which I probably do. I'm going to drop him a bit later so he doesn't Barbro and make a prediction or something. Also, in Single Elixir, again, I'm going to try to go in for Poisons a bit more aggressively if I can hit other units that are worthwhile. We do have the Evo Knight. And we should be fine on defense here. I can stop the Baby Dragon from crossing the river so he doesn't go in for a Graveyard and have a tank. Oh, he's going to Barbro. He's smarter. He's very, very smart to do that. And he's going to poison. He's going to hit the Little Prince. And that's how they start to get back in the game. So I might have to go for delivery. Oh, no, no, no. Evo Knight is tanky. That's good. We can go for another poison if we need to. But I don't... Yeah, actually, we're going to do it. I feel like I can get away with it. I think I'm good enough to do that. We can go in for a Little Prince again to win the battle at the river. So he doesn't get anything to cross besides a Barbro. But if he goes in for a Barbro, we might be able to go for the ability to knock it back and still win. I hope that we can win this. Let's go. Little Prince wins the battle at the bridge. So he can't successfully graveyard. And then we'll be able to cycle back to a poison. So it's all about the battle at the bridge. And that's how you manage your advantage. Since we saw a knight, now we know that he doesn't have any counter to our miner. If he doesn't have any answer to body block or catch the miner, we're obviously going to go for the miner in the safe spot and make sure he can't tornado. So if he tornadoes on offense as well with a baby dragon and try to like tornado units closer to our tower so he can splash onto our tower with the baby dragon splash, then we're going to use our miner in the back. I still think that poisoning here is an okay play. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to click the ability. I'm not going to go for the miner. I think that minoring would be very, very foolish right now. Maybe we could justify doing it if he's going to spend that amount of elixir. I think we're okay. I want to go in for a delivery and then a poison. And I need seven elixir for that. Okay, we have seven elixir. We're fine. We can go for the miner now. And he's going to be fully focused on offense. 
No, we can guarantee that we poison. He tornadoes. He doesn't have anything for the miner. Now we go for a log. So this guy is a top 200 player, by the way, and he is getting destroyed by our defenses. Like, this isn't even close. This doesn't even feel fair. And now you get to see the pure power of the miner poison. As we get to closer into triple elixir, the amount of poison that we'll be able to cycle is ridiculous. So I could poison right now. I'm just not going to. I'm going to play safer. I'm going to go for the delivery. I'm going to poison here. And we'll cycle two poisons. Because we have the delivery on defense with the Little Prince. And the Little Prince gives us the three-card cycle. Because you can't get two Little Princes on the map. It allows you to get back to poison and back to the cards that you want to even faster. So now we're able to poison. We're going to go for goblins here. We're going to go in for one more poison because I think the miner is going to get caught. Or maybe the poison just does enough. Yeah, poison does 320 damage at max ladder. So if you put it in that perspective, 320 damage guaranteed, cycling it twice, you can get 640 damage in a matter of seconds. And when you mix that in with two logs that do 85 damage a piece, you're totaling at 810 damage. The direct damage potential that you have with this deck allows you to win games in the final seconds and no one can catch up with you. So the best players in the world will always gravitate towards direct damage decks like this one that will give them guaranteed damage and allow them to pull ahead in the final seconds of matches. Minor Poison has been one of the best decks in Clash Royale since the very start of the game. And it will continue to be one of the best options to upgrade for many years to come. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.